Good evening, everybody. I'm Paul Kegabine, the Adult Programs Coordinator here at the Garland County Library, here with another live stream program. And tonight's presentation is called Serving the Community, and it's going to cover the importance of community service, volunteerism, and a humanitarian attitude towards one community. And it is my pleasure to have our guest speaker here for the program, Romeo Lopez. How are you doing, Romeo? I'm good, Paul. Thank you for having me. And uh, hello to all the YouTube and Facebook people out there. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I was going to make a Romeo and Juliet joke of some kind, but I couldn't think of a good one. <laughs> but you've probably heard some. Uh, but Romeo here, he is a man who wears many hats. He is the 2021 Greater Hot Springs Chamber of Commerce Rising Star recipient. Here's a picture of that moment. And he's also the manager of the downtown Garland County Habitat for Humanity Restore. And here he is cutting the ribbon for the grand opening at the new location back in December, was it? Back in December, but I did get transferred this past week. So now I'm the manager at the Lake Hamilton Restore. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. And he's also a charter member and past chairman of the Hot Springs National Park After Hours Rotary Satellite Club. That's quite a mouthful, but uh, here's one of him at Rotary that I found on Facebook. What's going on here? Well, I was uh, being given the Outstanding Rotarian Award by um, Chuck Lanius, and that was me just uh, getting a round of, of applause and getting my, my award. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, a lot of tonight's program is going to be a focus on Rotary, since that's the area of uh, community service that Romeo is most expert on. But um, before we get to that, uh, one other part of his resume, Romeo here has become a friend of mine, and we graduated in the past year's Leadership Hot Springs class together. And I'm thankful we, we were able to connect at that so we could have this program tonight. And here's a photo of us. Uh, we went to the Capitol to meet the, the governor, um, and there's Romeo standing right next to Governor Hutchinson, and I'm standing next to Romeo, and of course my eyes are closed. But <laughs> Romeo's looking sharp eyes wide open but they caught me at a at a blinking moment so <laughs> you, you got the the better of that photo but uh tonight uh i'm gonna turn things over to romeo for a little bit um and he's gonna tell tell us all about what rotary is and um his background in it and why community service is so important. And if you live viewers have any questions or comments or stories about your own experiences that you wish to share, please don't hesitate to do so. And I'll read those off to Romeo later in the program. So but before we, we hear about your background, just for those that aren't involved, uh, what is Rotary? Well, you know, Rotary is an international service organization who's purposes to bring together business and pro professional leaders in order to provide humanitarian service and to advance goodwill and peace around the world. Um, but here, we also have a focus on our community and making changes here for the better by being involved in many service projects, be it with other organizations, you know, collaborations, what we're all about. So if you're a kind hearted individual who wants to make a difference, but you're not a Rotarian, you're always welcome to come and join and see what you know what our meetings are about. Um, so that's and there's over 1.2 million Rotarians all over the globe. Uh, this is just not here in the United States. We're in Kenya. We're in Brazil. We're in Alaska. We're in Puerto Rico, New York. We're everywhere. So when we're making changes, we're doing it locally, but we're also doing it globally, coll collectively. Excellent. So yeah. So I know you had some uh, opening remarks you wanted to share and uh, tell us about yeah. your origins of community service. Well, I, I first want to start off with uh, telling people a little bit about, about myself, those that don't really know who I am. I'm from New York City. I'm from the Lower East Side. I was not born there. I was born in Puerto Rico, raised there. And then in 2009, I met my then wife, Kelly Wolfers, and we moved to Hot Springs, Arkansas in 2017. One of my highlights of being a New Yorker was working at the world famous Strand Bookstore, which a lot of people of you love books, hence my background. Um, the Strand Bookstore is a Mecca. Uh, so that's one of the great things that I loved about New York besides the pizza. Now, 
what I do want to talk about is why is it important to serve your community? So you are doing good for others in the community, which provides a natural sense of accomplishment. Your role as a volunteer can also give you a sense of pride and identity. Now, this is great if you're an introvert. I, I, I think I am. Um, it helps me come out of my shy shell and it helps me learn about my community and it allows me to make new friends who are like-minded and want to pursue the same thing that I'm pursuing in the community. Um, your role as a volunteer can also give you a sense of pride and identity. Um, volunteering can provide a healthy boost to your self-confidence, self-esteem, and life ideas that will positively impact your perspective. Um, helping your community is an opportunity for you to grow as a person too. I my background before coming to hot springs arkansas I, I worked for a corporate company for many years and when you're at a corporate company it's all about the bottom line it's not about the individual and you have to climb that corporate ladder so i developed a sense of a certain attitude and i hated that about me but you have to succeed and in new york if you hesitate somebody's climbing that ladder over you and you're letting you're being left behind um, so that helped me by service to help me find myself and what I really felt a passion for, which was serving my community alongside like-minded individuals. Also helping your community, it makes it easy for you to make friends who not only would be helping the ones in need, but I mean, you won't just be helping the community or those in need, you'll be helping yourself. You're going to be building lifelong friendships. And the one thing about service, which is which is awesome, let's say you on the weekends go mountain biking with a group of friends. Maybe you go to Paul at the library and say, can we do a class on how to mountain bike, the equipment you need? Doing things like that, it's a service to the community. You don't just have to collect food or give money things like that that's going to enrich the education of your community is service on its own um in, in addition like i said you can invite friends to do community service with you and that'll further strengthen your relationship with that person while you're also developing your your reputation in your community and it's just a really great way to have some fun at the same time um, Community service broadens your horizons by helping you understand the needs of a society and the population you're trying to help. Through the project you're volunteering, you're either reading about the issue or hearing about the issue, but you're actually working on helping fix that issue. You're becoming more aware of your surroundings and the need of the community through, through that partnership. Um, you know, the other things about this, uh, your moral values like honesty, humbleness, gratefulness, respect, and sincerity are some of the virtues to be learned from serving in a diverse community. These skills and lessons are not usually taught in classrooms, but by being responsible in your service, you learn to think I, me, myself, and get a wider perspective of life and others around you. So, you know, and I get to do this through my, my Rotary Club and also through working at Habitat. You know, we build homes for families here in our community. And I like to think that I found my home there in Habitat. Thank you for sharing. And I, you made some great points there. And I think w one thing that, that I really noticed was how, you know, not everybody is gonna be good at everything. Not everybody can contribute in every way, but assisting others in, sh in helping them with how they can contribute is, is really what it's all about. Like not everybody's going to have the time, not everybody's going to have the money, but you might have the other if you don't have one. And, and you might mm -hmm. have a skill set that someone needs that skill set or someone needs what you can contribute somewhere in your community. Yeah. And Paul, I just also want to add that there's, you talk about trade, there's life things that me, myself, I've never had to learn because I only started driving four years ago in New York. I never had to drive. And if I, if one of my tires, 
you know, was flat, I wouldn't know how to change a flat tire. <laughs> but even if those lessons, if you can teach somebody that in high school, you know, or have a class, it's just those small things that you never know the community would need. Right. Um, and I know there's YouTube, but if you're in a rural area where there's, or in a mountain and you need that skill, you won't be able to have YouTube. So it's just little things like that, that can really affect and impact your community. It's just crazy how the littlest things can really do that. Yeah. Well, I, I feel you on that. At least you have an excuse. You didn't need to use public transportation, but <laughs> yeah. I, I've driven since I was a teenager and I, I definitely couldn't change my own tire without hands-on assistance with it. So you uh, shared some photos with me. Uh, do we want to pull those up and you can tell us? Yeah, go for it. Let's see. So this, we recently, um, our chairwoman for the Hot Springs After Our Satellite Club, Nanette Crane Post, she said, hey, um, the cooling um, center over by the Salvation Army, they need water. And the club responded with over 40 cases of water. And that was just not the club. Those were other people that heard we were collecting waters. They, hey, Nanette, can you come and pick them up? And Nanette's like, yeah. And so that's that was a really um, powerful service project because it's going to benefit them for weeks to come. OK, here, this was a service project. Our then chairman, Richard Burke, to the right, um, Sam's Christian and Jamie Lanius and I, we painted the the fencing around the Habitat Restore that's downtown. It took us about two hours to do, but within those two hours, we had really great conversations and we had a lot of fun. That's that's the finished product. So one of the service projects that we did was to help water seal the docks at Entergy Park. So Christopher Harrison, who's our now um, secretary, he put that together with the National Park and or the Park Services. And we came in together one early morning and started water sealing the boat docks. And hopefully that'll help them, you know, stay good for four or five more years before they need to be redone. So as part of being a satellite club, we're not your usual Rotary Club. We're not members that can't meet necessarily at noon, which is the typical time Rotarians meet, noon or one o'clock. I can't get off of work at 12 for an hour, um, not as a restore manager. I got responsibilities. So we meet at cool places like this. This is 420 Eats, and we had the food trucks there for us. Um, it was just a really cool setting. So this is the difference between a standard traditional club versus a satellite. And here you can see some of our Rotarians um, water sealing the boat docks at Energy Park. Again, there's Chris giving a thumbs up, Wesley right there. Um, and I think that boat pulled up as they were starting to seal and the guy got lucky enough, we didn't paint over it. So here we are. Uh, we adopted a street downtown, which we clean a couple of times a year. And they're in this picture that I don't know how long it went without cleaning, but we had a lot of trash that was picked up. So there's me, Carter Zeiser, Richard Burke, and Jamie Lanius just uh, doing some trash pickup. So this is our current chairwoman, uh, Nanette Crane Post, and we donated some toiletries to the Jackson House. And this was an effort with not just Rotary, but this was a collaboration with Habitat for Humanity, where they put out collection boxes within all three restores. And remember, I talked about collaboration, and this is what collaboration gets you. Um, look at how well, look at how much we had to donate to the Jackson House. And this was a community collaboration between two different organizations. So this one's really special to me. We participated in the out of the out of darkness suicide walk last year, and we were Team Hope. Um, 
you know, we've, my family, we, we lost a big person in our life. And this was some, and so did other members in our club. And we felt this was a proper way to honor their, their memories. Um, you can go to the next slide or I'll start crying. Thank you. So we did Toys for Tots. Now, Toys for Tots, again, another collaboration. So if you want to do stuff in your community, I keep saying the word collaboration over and over again, but really this is how we were able to accomplish so many of these service projects. This was the Dollar General on Albert Pike working up, collaborating with Habitat for Humanity Restores. And then the Restores, we were collaborating with the, the Rotary Club. And just look at how many toys we got. And this is just one car full fault plumbing. They went to Conway, Arkansas, because somebody donated four, six pallets of, of toys. And that went to the Jackson House. And we were able to collect several thousand toys, which serviced a lot of kids. So this was one less expense the parents had to worry about during COVID, um, which is also something I want to talk about. Um, Parents being, you know, do I pay the rent? Do I pay the light? Because it's Christmas and I got to buy a toy. Things like this, they don't have to worry about. They can keep the lights on and the community will come to them and rally and bring toys for their kids. That's an impressive haul. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I think illegal because I couldn't see yeah. out of my back windshield. It, probably extra stressful because you just learned how to drive recently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did. Wow, that's really cool. It is. There's some. Yeah, so here's some more toys. It's another collaboration that a Rotarian in our club say said, hey, I'm part of Cooper Anthony Child Advocacy Center. We have this stocking project. Can we help? And collectively, we said, yeah, what can we do? And our members came in and we collaborated with, uh, I think, students at National Park College where they put together uh, 80 stockings as well. And again, another partnership in the community to uh, to service an, another another entity in here in, in our community, um, Cooper Anthony. Yeah, and shout outs to Cooper Anthony. They recently yeah. did some uh, mandated reporter training for some of our staff. Yeah, I, I we're strong supporters of them and we're, we're grateful to have them in our community. Absolutely. Yeah, so this is Chris Harrison. We collected more stockings. This is just him bringing more stockings for Cooper Anthony. So again, I'm talking about how we're not a traditional Rotary Club. This is us meeting at Sam's Pizza Pub, um, which that's what we do. We go from restaurant to restaurant, hopefully a place that's quiet enough for us to sit down, enjoy our meal and listen to a speaker. Um, the one thing we don't want is to have the speaker yell in her teacher voice so we can hear her. Um, but again, here we have our, our speaker and we're sitting down um, hearing her program. And this is just what makes us untraditional is meeting like this. Excellent. Well, thanks for sharing those. So let's take a look at our comments real quick, see who's tuned in here. Oh, we have Livy and Malia who said, hey. What's thanks up? Thanks for tuning in. Livy says, woot, woot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rico says, good man. Thanks for all you do, my friend. Thank you, Rico. And Carla says, so proud. Is that Carla Mouton? It is. Yeah, she's awesome. She's a great supporter of people like me in the community, and she's done so much for this community as well. She uh, she was my my wife's teacher growing up. I think she's everybody's teacher if you grow up in Hot Springs. Well, if, uh, if anybody watching live has any questions or wants to st share any of their stories for Romeo, uh, don't hesitate to, and we'll read those off. Um, so speaking of stories, um, are, are there any of your own that you would like to share from your experiences? Well, you know, I, I do have stories of my own, but I really want to talk about a couple that were told by me from Dennis Cooper, who is our past district governor, 
and he's the current district Rotarian of the year. He is one of the reasons why I got involved with Rotary. Uh, the main reason is my, my father-in-law, Clay Farrar, was a Rotarian for over 40 years. Um, and he would, I, I used to have a 13 inch beard and he would always tell me, Romeo, this is the Clay voice, Romeo, unless you shave that beard, you're not going to Rotary. <laughs> And he, he was just always kidding with me, but he never did take me to Rotary. So maybe he wasn't kidding. Um, but he would always tell me all the good things that Rotary, Rotary have, has done in Rotarians in our community. Um, Rotarians, you know, the national park was being downgraded. And this was in the 80s. And I heard this story a couple of times. So I only know a couple of certain names. So there must have been, there were a lot of people involved. But Washington wanted to downgrade the national park. They, they, it, so we were going to lose, we were going to go, we're going to have less, less funds, less things to offer. And Clay on a Saturday night or on a Saturday morning is reading and on page 800 and something, he sees that Hot Springs National Park is being downgraded. So he gets on the phone, calls Eric Jackson, and he must have been watching a baseball game or football game. He's like, Bahuba Clay Farrar on a Saturday is reading what Washington's going to do to this national park. And it's on page 800 and something. So him, Clay Farrar, um, Mark Fleischner, and other Rotarians got together to help save that, uh, help save the, the national park. And, and just imagine what not having the designation, what would have done to our community, our community. Um, you know, would the bathhouses still be there? Uh, would, would there have been a, a forest fire back there in the National Park Forest? I mean, there's just a lot of things that you got to ask yourself. What would have happened if we didn't keep that designation? Yeah, I, can't, um, I can't even imagine that's part of our identity. Yeah, it, it really is. And they were crucial in the downtown rehabilitation from Whittington to Park Avenue. Um, right now, you have Rotarians trying to save that Army and Navy building. Now, think about this. We don't know what kind of medical waste, because back in the days, you just dug a hole and threw everything in there, you know, and that's what they did. And these um, barrels are corroding. And, I'm, you know, there's I'm not part of the committee. I've, I've been pervy because of clay. I can hear, you know, I've heard remarks and other people. I don't know what the soil samples are, but I, I'm afraid if any of those chemicals got into our national park water, we'd be ruined. Uh, you know, that goes, that's the water people fill up every day downtown. That's the water that's used to brew beer downtown. That's the water used in the bathhouses. Just imagine it would just devastate us. So it's really important that we save that building. And Rotarians are the ones leading the way. Rotarians are the one going to Congress, going to our um, state representative saying, your eyes need to be on this because if not, you're going to hurt a thriving community. And that's not what we want. And Rotarians are leading the way on that. And, you know, those are some of my stories, but there's a story that was shared to me from Dennis Cooper. Um, there was a young man, I think it was either in Mexico, where he did not have the desire to live. And there was another man in the community who needed a kidney very, very badly, or he would die. The young man that didn't have the desire to live, he committed suicide. He tried to kill himself. He lived. He had a bunch of broken bones. Um, I don't know how much time passed, but a Rotarian heard about this and went to the man and said, listen, there's somebody in your community that wants to live. Would you consider giving him a kidney? The man said, yeah, uh, I will get tested and if I'm compatible, I will. Now, both men are in their communities and they're thriving. They're both alive. The man that didn't have the desire to live, he has the desire to live. And it was just that one act that changed his life around. Um, the other story was of a school, and again, in Mexico, where they had 500 students, no water. So Dennis Cooper said, I'll take, if you donate $5, everybody in the club donates $5, we'll see what we can do. And he had such a fantastic um, reaction to it. People were very generous. They were able to put up a 10,000 gallon um, water tank in that school for the 500 students. And, you know, that's just what one Rotary Club is doing here, uh, not just in this community, but one club affected the lives of 
these kids in that in New Mexico or Me wherever they are. They, it's just amazing to see that. Now, the beauty about that is that through these service projects, whether they're getting uh, toys for Christmas or serving dinners um, or getting water for these students, those seeds have been planted there. And that small ripple, I believe in that small ripple, you might not see the benefits of it right away, but that small ripple will turn into a huge wave and change their lives or impact the community's life in some way. And it was because of that one good deed that you did. And I do want to share one story because talk about planting the seed. About four years ago, I'm at my restore downtown and there's a man that comes in, has a shirt and it's freezing outside. He asked if we can donate a coat and we go back there and look. No coat will fit, fit him. And our restore director, Ben Baker, walks in and he he pretty much goes, what's happening? It's like, well, we can't find him a coat. So he takes off his coat, which is a heavy duty, nice coat. He's like, why don't you look around my size? He just gives it to the guy. The guy's so appreciative. He puts it on. Ben walks away. The person walks away. And I've been thinking about that for four years. Just imagine the impact it had on that young man who had a need for a coat and somebody was able to to meet that need I, I mean whether he tells somebody in the future or maybe he paid it forward and gave that coat to somebody else um it's just those small acts that will stay in somebody's mind and you will see the benefits not you maybe not you but the community will in the future and that's just the the beauty of being a kind human being and being the good you want to see in this world. Thank you. Those are that's amazing. Uh, just all those acts that for, for you, you know, five dollars or a toy or even a jacket, maybe not a kidney. That that's pretty big. But all these little things can make such that they, they may not mean a lot to you, but they can make such a huge difference and be life changing for the right person that needs them at that moment. Exactly, and you know, just real quick i went to buy cat food at a kroger a gucci kroger the other day that's the one on central yeah the one with a nice food. cheese section yeah, yeah. yeah they do. <laughs> so i bought dog food by accident my and I, have to, I already fed my cats the dog food i didn't even know the difference so even taking that dog food i'm not going to go get the return i i'm going to go donate that to stop animal cruelty and, and that's the other thing you know there's so many organizations here that are looking for volunteers and you ask yourself, well, how can I approach them? They want you to approach them. They, they do just like with, with me and my rotary club, we want you to come and be members. So we're doing things like this to tell you, we want to help this community and we want to do it along you alongside with you. And, you know, even if you, Again, I'm going to go back to the mountain. Well, you know, let's forget about the mountain biking. Um, how about you have a gardening club or a book club and you guys have your book meeting? Why not bring, for example, some cans of per uh, non-perishable foods to the meeting or some dog food or pet food? And at the end of the day, just allocate somebody to go take them to a shelter. I mean, just something that simple can really change a, a, a a, you know, an organization in the community and, you know, places are really, you know, they're just volunteer strong and they're only one employee is this, the manager that runs the store and that person can't do it alone. And just by donating food, donating your time, you know, small, those changes can affect your community in a big way. And places you think are just small, you know, it may not be small to other people. That might be their lifeline. Um, so, you know, think about that when you have your next book club meeting or your next meeting in general, just think about doing something like that. That's a really creative way of, of, of helping out. Absolutely. So you've experienced both sides of it, you, the volunteerism side and worked your way up from average Joe volunteer to position of management. Uh, what has that experience been like? Has it been 
challenging going from kind of an entry level that anyone can do to taking a managerial role? Yeah, so it's it's one thing when you take a box and you put it in the restore or just any business in general and you say, please, you know, drop off some food or some toiletries. But when I got elected chairman for the club, it all changed. I, I had this big responsibility to take this new club, incoming club, and make it grow. And this happened during COVID of 2020, where places were shut down, we couldn't meet in person. And I had to do something to keep my members engaged and also keep them safe. So it's very challenging. Um, and I had to learn on my own. I had a lot of advice from friends. Um, Michelle Ratcliffe gave me a lot of advice. Um, she's a great Rotarian who is the mother of our Rotary, of our um, satellite Rotary Club. She, it was her idea and she collaborated with other members of the Rotary Club and we were, you know, and, and we were born for a better lack of the word. And it was very challenging. You can be boots in the ground and not worry about putting things together and the organization. And it's overwhelming. It was for me. Um, other people find it easy. It's what they thrive on. They love that challenge. I I see that challenge and I I get really scared at first. Then I start double double guessing myself. And then I just say, you know what? I'm put in this position because they have um, respect for me and they know I'm going to get the job done. So I'm just going to go and do it. So you have two different mindsets when it comes to boots in the ground and putting events together. Some people can do both. I like to be boots in the ground, but sometimes you become a leader and you have to own that role. You have to own it. You have to make yourself grow and you have to listen and you have to just sit back sometimes and take in um, ideas and critiques from the people that are serving alongside of you because they, they know you just as well as some friends. I, I mean, I spend a lot of time volunteering with people at the cooling shelter and we spend hours just talking, getting to know each other. So those people know you and they want the, what's best for you. So that, you know, you got to welcome in that advice when you're in a leadership role, when it comes to volunteering. Well, and I'm glad you've been recognized for stepping up uh, into these roles, Rising Star Award, and um, you, you clearly have stepped up to the occasion. Yeah, and you know, I, it's been such an honor to serve this community, which I've only been part of since 2017. Um, lately, the Sentinel Record uh, named me their millennium, their, a millennial making a difference, and their title said former New Yorker. And I started to say, <laughs> wait, what? And and then I took it and I said, wait, this is my community adopting me. I'm not no longer a New Yorker. I'm a former New Yorker who's now a hot springs, a hot springs person. You know, this is my community. So my community adopted me. That's how I took it. <laughs> and it was awesome. Funny. Um, but you know. I want to talk about collaboration again. Me and Paul did attend Leadership Hot Springs, the class of 34, which is the best class, by the way. Everybody's got to say that, but it's true. Um, but we found great partnerships within those people in that class. Um, we got together and Paul helped, you know, we he got us a room and we put together trauma bags for Cooper Anthony. Um, another service project that we did was um, with Dennis Davis and the giving team, we put toiletry bags for them. So even just taking a class, we found great collaboration and we were able to do something good together for this community. And that's just, I mean, think about that. You're just going to take a class and you impacted an organization by doing a community service project. It can't get any awesome than that. Right. And, and anybody can do it. You don't have to join Leadership Hot Springs or any other class. No, you can no. do that of your own volition. Yeah, no, this was just, you know, to let you know that this is just another avenue that you can, 
visit and you can do this as an individual reach out to the jackson house and say hey i've got me and my church group we want to help out we want to you know help plate some food do you need volunteers i, I mean anybody can volunteer really it's just you got to have the passion to do it absolutely well said a uh, few more comments have come in we have brent who says it's great hearing about all the amazing service projects it looks like y'all had a lot of fun too and um, i'm gonna completely ignore alex since we know him he all he said was don't repeat what i write <laughs> too late <laughs> Anna says, amazing job. Proud of you. Jennifer That's says, my sister. Ah. She's in New York. So, uh, yeah, so that's cool that she wrote in. Well, well um, but you revoked your New York card in front of her. So. Well, well <laughs> if she, she, she'll understand. I'm, I'm, the big, I'm the big brother. I can do what I want. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Jennifer says, way to go, Romeo. This man is an inspiration to all. Thank you, Jennifer. So what, in your opinion, are the biggest needs that Hot Springs has as a community right now? Well, this is just from my experience, um, you know, and this has been brought up everywhere I go, and it's the homeless population. Um, you know, as a person who volunteers, all I can do on my on my end with my Rotary Club, with my members, is collect toiletries. Um, we make food and we hand them out. Um, but you know, there's not much. That, I mean, th there's just not a lot of programs here for them. Um, I know the shelters are are uh, are fully um, full to capacity. Uh, I, I just you know, homelessness is one of them. Um, you know, I see education being brought up a lot when I go to to club meetings. Um, but you know, you have to be part of that community, and you you got to service that community. And by servicing your community, you're going to know what their needs are. This is just what I've seen, and what I've dealt with has been education, has been um, homelessness hunger um and you know you don't necessarily do be, need to be hungry to go to the jackson house you can be in between jobs um when we did the cooling center there were families there who's just lost electricity um you know or they couldn't pay the bill it's not necessarily homeless people that are looking for these benefits so you know you gotta not be quick to judge um because a person's mental stability might be different than than what you think you're portraying them to be because people are in need all the time and if you want to know what your community needs you need to get in there contact organizations and say hey i would like to volunteer what can i do and only by you doing that you're going to see the needs that your community could benefit from yeah i mean what's that saying every everybody's or society's nine missed meals away from anarchy and I mean, mm -hmm. that's true for most people are one missed paycheck away from struggling on missing bills or rent. Yeah. And, you know, right now people are saying, do I pay for gas and go to work or do I not pay the cable bill or the phone bill, you know, or the light bill? There's all these things here in the community that it's just um, one little thing like that and you'll you'll need the services of um, food pantries and you'll need services of um, cooling centers um, just those those decisions that you have to make and you know just in a personal story i've also experienced food insecurities growing up um, you know i waited in line with my mom and my brother to get cheese um, milk the powder milk not not like the liquid milk, it was powdered milk, um, cheese, um, just so that we can have some food on the table. And we would eat lunches at our school during the summer. And it wasn't only, it was only when I became an adult that I said, wow, these people are taking their summer to come in 
to feed us breakfast and to feed us lunch. And, you know, that is impactful that they're taking their time off to help me, uh, nobody to put food on the table. And that, you know, that comes full circle for me because here I am trying to do the same things that I benefit benefited from and consider me that, that ripple. I started off as a ripple and now I'm creating this wave and this wave is creating other ripples. So just think about the people that were there when me and my mom and my family were in line, how they impacted my life. And now I'm committing a life to service in my community because of them. So that comes full circle for me. And I just want to point this out so I don't forget if anybody watching this needs or knows anybody who needs internet access to fill out any kind of forms or, or government applications or, or just any for any reason at all, homework, whatever, right behind me there we have internet computers free to the public. Uh, you don't even have to get a library card. We can get you a guest pass and we'll help you out. Um, we have Wi-Fi to get on your devices here. So I know internet insecurity is a big issue as well and so many things rely on having internet access job applications everything so how do with with all these opportunities here in hot springs to help and this is even something our leadership class struggled with picking class projects how do you choose where you can best assist without feeling overwhelmed well, this is, again, uh, it's just not a me thing. It's a, it's me and my fellow Rotarians who have seen the need in, in the community from their service projects. Um, you know, so it's a, an effort between all of us. Uh, we get together, just like our chairwoman said, she's like, hey, the cooling centers, they need water. And we collected water. Um, so it's a an effort between all of us. Um, so we're just one unit. We collectively think about what the community is looking for, what we're seeing the need is, and we go ahead and we decide to do, we do a service project a month, sometimes two or three. Um, that's what's really special about our club. Um, but it's really um, the needs that we're seeing in our community by each member. That's how we decide our, our, our service projects. So, and, and how do you determine, you know, since needs can't always be met overnight, how do you determine if you're making progress and, and know what you're doing is making a difference? Well, you get people that come to you and just say, thank you so much for doing this. Um, you know, thank you for setting up the cooling shelter. You know, even my capacity at the cooling center was just setting up the beds and handing out waters and but people were just thanking you and I mean, you'll see, I mean, from our service projects, it, the you won't see the change right away. You'll see it progressively. Um, but the things that we do, like Toys for Tots and collections of such items, you know, that's an immediate need. Um, you know, our long term goals, uh, I mean, we want to we have goals, but we're not seeing that change dramatically right away because that's not our goals are not centered that way our goals are centered to specific thing uh, toiletries hunger um you know this is at a bigger level where other people other community leaders if we want to tackle hunger they got to step in so we can see a a change in you know in the long term not just the immediate which is now which what we really tackle with with our services all right romeo so i've got a little game to play with you. We're gonna play uh, nonprofit trivia. Okay. Okay. And I got most of these facts from uh, 501c3.org. So if if I have anything wrong, blame them. But I, I doubt they have anything wrong on there. Okay. All right. So your first question is, and, and this is multiple choice. Fear not. How many nonprofit organizations are in the U.S.? A approximately 75,000, B, approximately 500,000, or C, approximately 1.8 million? Well, this is when I'm going to take advantage of your free Wi-Fi, Paul. No, you're, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was that? What was C? Uh, 1.8 million. I'm going to go with C. 
one point eight million. You are correct. All right. And here's a bonus fact for you: there's more than ten million nonprofits worldwide. Wow. So almost a fifth here in the U.S. Wow. All right. Question number two: What month during the year accounts for the largest percent of annual giving? November, December, or January? Oh man. Let's see. Largest percent of annual giving. I'm gonna say November because that's when a lot of toy drives are, a, a lot of coat drives are going on. A lot of food um, is being served for uh, Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna say November. It's actually December. Oh man. But yeah, they definitely start to ramp up in November. I, I wonder which one is the answer just here locally. Let's see. Next question. What percent of that annual giving occurs during December? So what percent of the entire year's giving occurs in December? A, 20%, B, 30%, or C, 40%? I'm going to go with 40%. Not quite. It was 30%. Ah. And uh, as an extra bonus fact, 10% of all giving in the entire year occurs on the last three days of the year. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. If, not sure why that is. Do you have any theory? I, you would think it would be before a, Christmas, but maybe it's just surplus. Or... Yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell you. So on average, next question, on average, how many hours per year do people spend volunteering their time? A. 30 hours, B, 52 hours, or C, 76 hours? This is an individual for one year? Yeah. Let's see. 30, 52, 76. Okay. I'm going to go 52. You got it. How, how many would you say you spend a year on average? Um, I'd say about between 50 to 75. Um. Uh, yeah, that's a good number. What percent of funding directly goes to children and youth in the U.S.? A, 21%, B, 30%, or C, 8%? I'm going to say 8%. No, it's, it's actually higher. It's 21%. Really? Okay. Um. Okay, next question. What American nonprofit topped Forbes 2021 list of top 100 charities in terms of total fundraising? Was it A, Feeding America, B, Salvation Army, or C, United Way? Oh my gosh, Paul. <laughs> uh, let's see. How about Feeding America? Nope, it was actually United Way. Oh man. Let's see you should and, see me playing jeopardy man i got no <laughs> questions right you, well you're doing better than no questions yeah so. that's true all right here's I'll, I'll i'll end with a um one that hopefully you'll know but if not i don't mean to embarrass you we'll, we'll, we'll just hit the program <laughs> right there okay what city is home to the habitat for humanity headquarters is it a atlanta georgia b Santa Barbara, California, or C, New York City? I'm going to say Atlanta, Georgia. That's right. Yeah. You got it. All right. Well, I'll say you passed that trivia. You got <laughs> Thank you, Paul. More, more right than wrong. <laughs> so um, let's see. Check back in here. Uh, Malia says, how do you join Rotary? Yeah. So if you go to the hot springs national park rotary so it's if you go to their facebook hot springs national park rotary um you click on their website and there's a link there with an application um and you can submit that application or after this um i can email it to you malia and and i want you to join the satellite club by the way well, I'm going to give one last call if anybody has any questions for Romeo or just wants to show some love, give him a shout out, um, get that in while you can. Um, 
so Romy, any any final uh, remarks or, or any stories that, that you wanted to tell or just any um, anything about opportunities to volunteer? Yeah, um, you know, there's always the giving team. They're always looking for volunteers. Uh, you can reach out to Janice Davis. Uh, I don't have her information right in front of me. Uh, the Jackson House, Stop Animal Cruelty, even Habitat for Humanity, we're looking for volunteers too. If you like, you know, painting homes and laying sod, this is a great that's a great opportunity, uh, even for team building. If you and a team want to come to a Habitat home and volunteer, that's a that's a great thing to do. Um, but that's all I've got. Um, I just want to thank you, Paul, for the time, and I want to thank your the viewers who submitted questions or the viewers to just kind of sat back and listen. I hope that I was able to contribute something. I hope that you were able to take something out of this conversation. And I really, really look forward to serving this community and hopefully alongside with you in the future. Appreciate you. And, and if nobody watching and, and felt inspired, I did for sure. Um, well, one, one more question. So, you know, a lot, a lot of times I hear, I don't want to call it an excuse because I mean, it, it can be true. We all have busy lives, but but what if someone says, you know, I don't have the time, I don't have the free time for that. What, what is the best avenue for those people to contribute? Yeah. So if you have the, the, the means to write a check, uh, that's always a good thing. Um, I know food banks greatly welcome checks um, because they can do a whole lot of, they can buy a whole lot of food with those, uh, with that money. Um, so if you have the, the means and you have the heart for an organization and you want to contribute to them and that way I'd say go for it. Or even if it's uh, handing out a pamphlet about that organization that you're interest uh, that you're passionate about, telling coworkers, telling um, your kids or your friends about it, um, maybe they have the time to volunteer. Um, that's another thing that you can do besides just write a check. But I mean, any nonprofit will take your check. Yeah. And I know it probably varies from place to place, but would you say, money is preferable or gift cards or, or actual supplies is there kind of a preference you know i i wouldn't be able to tell you because it varies from right. place to place i know the places that i personally um donate to i, I don't donate money i donate food uh, or i donate pet supplies or supplies um you know that's the venue that i take because that's how i like to do it but again, it depends uh, it depends on the individual and the organization. Um, yeah, I mean, gift cards could be great if it's uh, if it's a community thing, and um, you know, I, it just varies from organization to organization. Um, you know, I know if somebody's hungry and they don't, and this organization doesn't have food to give you, they probably have a a gift card that they can give you for you to go buy some supplies. Um, so, you know, I, it just varies from organization to organization. Sure. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Romeo, for, for giving this uh, program, for this presentation. Really appreciate it. And uh, remind everyone one more time if they want to contact you, how they can get a hold of you. Yeah. So you can email me at romeokelly at icloud.com. Uh, you guys can reach me out on Facebook, Romeo Lopez. Um, I can be reached by phone, but I, I'm not going to give out my phone number. But if you know somebody that knows me, have them give me my number. I just don't want to put it out there. Sure. Um, yeah. Fan can, mail only. Yeah. Yeah. You can email me. You can also call the restore where I'm the manager at on Lake Hamilton. You can call that store and ask for me and we can talk about um, what you need to, what, what, what questions you have, I can try to answer. Uh, but the best way is, is by email. Great. Thank you, Romeo. And thank you, everybody, for watching. If you're watching live or you're watching this in the future, uh, this broadcast was recorded. So please do Romeo and just the community in general a favor and, and share this on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, it's archived. And if you tuned in late, you can go back right after this is over and watch the beginning of the program as well. And until next time, uh, get out there and do some good work and um, have a good night. And thank you, Romeo. You have a good thank night. Thank you. Good night, Paul. Good night, everybody.